in researching the shocking errors and blasphemies of Bishop T.D. Jakes many years ago, a post from an obscure website popped up on our radar. It was anonymously written by a man who allegedly worked under Jakes before starting Potter's House in Dallas. Pay attention as some think Jake started off in truth, then fell off later. Unless someone has proof, all indications are that he had rainbow tendencies before the 1996 move to Dallas. The man writing this post shockingly accuses Jake's of pressuring him to do unspeakable things with Jake's. I'll read what this man had to say and let you decide if you believe it or not. Again, these are allegations that were posted 15 years ago in 2008. And Jake's is a very public figure, so we are just reporting on a news item, not making up rumors. The original post on WordPress disappeared, ooh, of course, but the webmasters were smart enough to mirror the site so that they brought it up on another site later. We know that the gospel goons of Jake's are going to and fro throughout the internet searching for sites to devour. <laughs> I'll leave links below. And if Jake's team tries to zap this website, no worries. We're already backed up the content from this site on several geographically dispersed storage sites. We don't own the site, of course, but we expect they already have mirror sites in place just in case Jake's comes after them. And we just made a copy of the content for ourselves, basically, for our own purpose, you know, legal purpose. Okay, here's what the man had to say. I have known Bishop Jakes for quite some time. I met him before the world embraced him as the next Billy Graham and before he had made his many millions of dollars. I met him when he was just Elder Thomas Jakes. At first, I was equally mesmerized by his ability to preach the revelatory word that seems easy for him but difficult for others to see in the word of God. He shared with me how he was an avid reader, avid Bible reader, and told me the way he read was the reason he could see what others did not. He was sharing many things with me that seemed to be a help to my ministry. Eventually, I became his armor bearer. This allowed me to see ministry from a completely different angle. I saw backroom deals that I never knew happened as well as backdoor deals that were a total shock. More on that later. Bishop Jakes had started climbing the ladder in preaching circles around the tri-state area, you know, in and around West Virginia, and seemed to just have doors open for him without much effort. Hmm, who opened those doors? Anyway. He would tell me of stories of other preachers and their involvement in scandal after scandal, always remarking that it was shameful that he was supportive of the leaders who were under demonic attack. I would later find out that he was supportive, all right, because he was exactly what they were, homosexual. I've, I have had an amazing level of warfare because of the knowledge that I have concerning Bishop Jakes. I have sought godly counsel from men who I respect to only be told that it was my responsibility to, quote, cover him. Okay, let me break in here. Pay attention. Why would they tell him to, quote, unquote, cover for Jakes? Think about it. Anyway, continuing. I bought into it and did what I thought was right until month after month passed and then year after year and I would hear of young men that he was introducing to an unholy lifestyle. Pay attention. Who got these boys into his network in the first place? Okay, continuing. I can only ask God to help me with what I should do about what I knew. After much travail and prayer, and also after enduring an amazing onslaught from people who used to be my friends, I have come to one conclusion. First, I have asked God to forgive me for my silence. 
While Bishop Jakes was not successful in his, his attempt to have physical relations with me, he did everything he could to try to convince me to power his bottom. <laughs> you know, my updated words. You know what I'm talking about. After seeing that I would not fall for his tactic, he said something to me that to this day still reverberates in my ear. Quote, sometimes too much light hurts the eyes. <laughs> Oh boy, pay attention, because demons speak like this. Nobody talks like this, as if man-to-man -man relations is light. Who, who does that? You know, let me continue. At first, I had no idea what he meant. Then later understood that he was saying to me that he had revealed too much of himself to me. Duh, what an understatement from such an articulate man. This is where my personal warfare began. Questions began to surface in my head like, what kind of sign was I giving off that made him think he could approach me like that? Okay, hang on a second. Let me step in right here. This is yet another spiritual bullying tactic that demons use to make you feel insecure about the fact that a demon just attacked you. Never doubt yourself, people. Demons try everyone. You just have to resist and move on. All right, let me continue. Then the warfare took on the feeling that I felt a need to prove my manhood. I began to have intimate relations with as many women as would allow me to satisfy my carnal nature to prove my manhood. Basically, he was just smashing a bunch of women, uh, running through them, basically. All the while protecting his, quote unquote, too much light. <laughs> Who says that? Anyway, the saddest part to this warfare is that because of the information I had, Bishop was afraid that I would use it against him, so he began to forecast me as a troublemaker and a liar. All of the mutual friends that we had in common received phone calls and were told to not to invite me to speak at their events. All right, I'm sorry, let me step in here as well. Recall how the Cassie lawsuit now, today, against Diddy brought up the whole conversation about how Hollywood blackballs certain up-and-coming stars who don't play the power-bottom game. Even color purple actress Taraji P. Henson was rumored to have been on the brink of being blackballed simply because she was tired of not being paid her fair share. We expect such tough, unforgiving tactics from demonic Hollywood types, but there are powerful circles among the demonic church leaders who act just like Hollywood when it comes to blackballing up and coming preachers. If you don't play the abomination and blasphemy game with them, they will cut you off. Okay, continuing. Obviously, because of his reputation, he was believed, you know, Jake's, and I was not. He even sowed seed in my home between my wife and I by telling her that I was no longer welcome to the church, but that she could continue to come. That marriage eventually ended in divorce. It took me a while to stop having dreams of going to his church and quote-unquote testifying. <laughs> Give honor to God, basically, and then nail him by exposing him. All right, let me jump in here as well. In this case, fellas, gentlemen, pay attention. If your wife is so smitten by a fake pastor that she gives you the side eye on his command, then it is your duty to immediately send her crazy ass packing and find a better wife. <laughs> okay, continue. All right, here we go. I did not go through with exposing him at the time because even under that pressure, I feared God and didn't want to hurt his people. I sought counsel and found that I was in a cesspool of man-on-man -man action among church leaders, but all on the down low. They, these high-ranking church network leaders, were all married and appeared happy. Once I found out how bad the church rainbow agenda was, I turned in my doggone license. I had the doggone part. I'm sorry about that. And stopped going to church. I cried out to God for help. I can feel the anointing right now. One thing that I thank God for is that even when you are nobody to everybody, you are somebody to him. Amen, brother. I thank God that not only did he hear my cry, but sent deliverance to me. He healed me from bitterness. I have been contacted by many people who had questions about Bishop Jakes, and I would not expose him to them because I didn't want to hurt the church. 
I have been offered BET programming from other pastors who wanted me to out him, but I chose not to. Okay, a little side note here. I kind of wish he did, actually, even if BET and those pastors had an ulterior motive, because since then, Jags has gotten worse with his blasphemies and errors to the point where I think many have committed the unforgivable sin. But we'll dive into that in our religious video series coming soon, so pay attention and subscribe. All right, continuing. Today, I feel God's unction as I type because it is now time to expose what many have been following in error. But more importantly, Bishop Jakes has become extremely bold with his lifestyle statements, and it concerns me that many will blindly follow. All right, keep in mind, this was over 15 years ago, so he's right, and I agree. Anyway. I saw the photographs of his daughter's wedding and saw him wearing an earring in his ear. Bishop knows the history of the earring as well as anyone. He has preached against it before. He knows it's wrong. It is apparent that he did not, uh, he did know it was wrong because the photos with the earring in are disappearing and photos that have been altered to remove the earring are now surfacing. So he's basically trying to cover it all up now. Bishop Jakes is not what many think him to be. None of his children, neither natural, spiritual, or adopted, have lives without extreme warfare. While I know we are not fighting against flesh and blood, we are, however, fighting principalities, ruling spirits that have power on earth. Bishop Jakes is a definite representation of a principality. I totally agree. The most unfortunate part to the story is that many know but won't do anything about it. There are a growing group of men who will no longer be quiet about what the current religious leaders are allowing to creep into our ranks. The end. That's the end of that quote. All right, so what are your thoughts? Comment below. Since these allegations over 15 years ago, Jake's has only gotten worse. My late mother loved going to his church, by the way, even when she was becoming less and less mobile. She would faithfully tithe, even though she didn't have the money. She was on SSI and Medicare, and I subsidized the rest of her bills. So I wasn't too thrilled that she was giving money to him of all people. If he were a true minister, then I, I can kind of see it. But in the few years before she passed, I did everything I could to get her to see that Jakes is not a Christian, but a charismatic, motivational speaker who, who speaks gibberish that people call tongues, but it's blasphemy. I also discussed how he was on the down low. She finally got the message just in time. I hope more people do the same thing before it's too late. But real quick, do me a favor. Please like, share, and subscribe so we can keep this new channel growing. Thanks for all those who pushed us over 4,000 subscribers since mid-November. That was a great push. Let's do 10,000 by the end of January, God willing. The apocalypse of good men continues.